And now, to the millions and millions of listeners and viewers all across the world. Let's go. It's the That's Not Christian Dale, Podcast. Dale, dale. Let's go. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What up, y'all? It's your boy Switch. I'm here with your man Jimmy. I'm here with your man Jay. I'm here with your man Ant. And we have a very, very special guest, the lyrical monster himself, Jared Uh-oh. Sanders. Hey, hey, hey. Favorite hey. rapper. Hey, hey, hey. rapper. Word up. What's up, fellas? How y'all doing, man? How was y'all weekend, man? How was y'all Thanksgiving? We back. Gluttony. Nothing but gluttony. Mm. I guess oh, true. Oh, no. Um, I'm gonna tell you something, man. Like, as I become an adult, right, and I get older, I realize how much my body does not like food that is made for baby calves, right? So, so basically, (laughs) what I'm saying, like, dairy is not my thing. So, like, I messed around and and had some macaroni and cheese, and it kind of stuck with me for a little bit. It was fire, though, right? It it just, you know, what doesn't sit well. You don't, I don't, I don't think I appreciate it anymore. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like this, there used to be things when I was a younger person who I would do and I'd be like, you know, I'm going to regret it afterward, but I'm going to do it anyway. Right. Like as, as I get a little older, like it's not worth it, bro. Like it's, it's just not, it's not, it's not. You hear that switch? You hear that switch? Toilet sessions is not worth it. Huh? <laughs> and Cause you know, the, the more intolerant you become, your stomach just talk back faster. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> like, nah, right, right. Nah, hey you know, man, what you doing? <laughs> <laughs> Quick, yeah, so nah, yeah, you that's what happened to me you when I had it. coquito. It didn't, oh, ah, that's not Christian. Five o'clock in the morning. <laughs> oh, <laughs> no, <laughs> coquito, five in the morning. No, no, I'm no, saying dude, that that at five in the morning, it hit, this it hit, dude was on hit, the block, hit right? my stomach, uh, 5 a.m. You were, you were suffocating, wifey. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Right. yeah, terrible. Man. But yeah, so who yo- cooked? You cooked? You cooked? Switch? Nah, I went to my um parents' house, home. We wow, you we went to another year. person's home because Cuomo, Jay, Jay ready to snitch. Jay oh, you hear this, Cuomo? Snitch. Yeah, it was less than ten have, people. Switch. So. What you have for Thanksgiving? You had some chopped cheese. <laughs> uh, that's how the BX do Thanksgiving. Nah, we had stuffing, we had turkey, we had all the good stuff, man. String beans. I mean, yeah, string beans, green beans, sweet potatoes, yeah, ham. Just don't I'm tell out. how many people was there. No lechon. And don't hey, no, no snitching. Don't don't tell how many people was yeah, there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was less it was, than ten, man. It was yeah, it was yeah, it was less than ten. <laughs> legally allowable. It was like yeah, two. You give me a love. The Lord <laughs> said <laughs> that when you get married, you become one flesh. <laughs> hey, man, listen, my man out here asking the op questions, like how many people was in the building? <laughs> That's a lot of names, move for two birds and social. You got that spirit of 6'9", man. You already know. <laughs> <laughs> hey, um, it was, it was interesting. I mean, we had to wear masks. We had an individual there that still wanted to come and they should have never been there because uh, oh. they have oh. some like issues. They have like health issues, but they still wanted to come out for Thanksgiving. And I get it. So we kind of had to keep a little distance and wear our mask for a little bit. But then after a while, I was like, ah, nobody's wearing their mask. Like, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> you know, at first it was like everybody came in with their mask and hey, how you doing? And then after you start talking and y'all start having a great time and your family's there, everybody's all masked. A couple coquitos and the mask just come off. Yep. Huh? <laughs> <laughs> you see, you seen that lady, though? She's like, oh. assume you got assume you got COVID because everybody was out on, on Thanksgiving. Oh, the health man. lady from the White House. Oh, oh no, that's man. crazy. Jeez. That's crazy. Why they, that's why why they do that, man? Like, what's crazy is I, I, I'm going to be real. Like, I really wear masks when I patronize an establishment, right? Because they say right. no mask, no service. <laughs> but real talk, like me and my wife went to a um, a birthday party for her sister, like on a cruise ship in Maryland, and everybody was supposed to wear their masks, right? <laughs> and um, eventually, like masks suck when you were like from a distance from somebody, and you know how you don't realize how much you read lips. You know what I'm saying? Like you don't realize right. until like you can't 
And then it's like, yo, what? What did you say? Like my wife, is like, <laughs> can you? Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. I'm like, yo, I don't, I don't know. Just take the mask off, like, cause I don't know. What you're saying. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? She's like, uh, yeah, can you get me a bottle of water? I'm like, yo, I would have never knew that, like, unless I walk all the way up on you with a mask on, right, like, so right. masks, patronize them, you know. Submit to the law. Yo, that's that's interesting too. I wonder how how this has affected like the deaf community, you know, who heavily <laughs> rely on lip reading. You know what I'm saying? Mm. Yeah. Like, yeah. Not, yeah, I don't, I don't know. But but then again, like, were they born deaf or did they become deaf? Because if they were born deaf, what difference would it make? You know what I'm saying? Like, they wouldn't know what you were saying the anyway. Point. Right. Like, yeah. like, <laughs> if they became deaf, it'd be like. I think I I think I got what you're saying. You know? <laughs> yeah. yeah, that, that word sounded like or looked like this. So right, right, right. They well, use sign, sign language anyway, right? Yeah, so. yeah. I mean, they should. That would be. <laughs> yeah. You know? What you fellas got into, man? What y'all was doing? Whose whose family's house y'all went to? I, cook, I went man. to. Wow! Look at that. You cooked. I cook every year, man. Yeah. My grandma, that, my grandma said my turkey's the best. Oh, so Damn. that's all I need. Well, grandma say it's good. That's it. that's you know what I'm it. saying? It's official. So you made everything. Yeah, well, we we do it a little differently. I'm from El Salvador, so all we basically do is like French dip sandwiches. I guess is the best way to describe it. So it's like it's like a turkey and a it's kind of like a guisao. It's like it's like in a in a sofrito, and then we just make sandwiches out of it with like you know all the fixings. Like we don't really do like side dishes like mac and cheese and all that other stuff. Oh, it's wow. straight sandwiches. Like that's that's it. That's what we do. That's mm. what we do the second day. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Leftovers, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's leftovers. leftovers. Yeah. Yeah. That's funny. <laughs> I can't do leftovers, man. Like I get I got a two plate quota. You on one and done. Given. The first plate. And then like whatever that to go plate is, and like I'm done, I'm ready for tacos. <laughs> <laughs> no, nah, I'm good. No man. turkey tacos, no nothing, huh? No turkey nah, pizza. No, nah, no, nah, that stuff is None. seasonal food to me. Like it's holiday food, so it's like, yo, the holiday over. I'm tired of turkey. Right. <laughs> wow. Who was I, th- I heard Jay was fasting for Thanksgiving, right? A word? Uh, no. Were you? Yeah, he's in the holy of holies, man. <laughs> Not at all. Oh, you saved, saved. <laughs> <laughs> nah, we had that. You had, you so had two had, Thanksgivings, though, right? Yeah, oh. so uh, last like, Tuesday, a cousin of uh, the family uh, just came back from Afghanistan. Um, so he drove hello, from... Bar. <laughs> he drove from uh, Tennessee with his wife. Well, his wife, she flew in, but he drove from Tennessee to come to New York. And then uh, he was like, yo, I'm going to be here for a couple of days. Let's do Thanksgiving at my, my parents' house. I was like, all right, cool. So we went, he did the the turkey, he did fried. I've never had fried turkey before, which is bad. It's good. Mm. I never had it either. Yeah, but I heard it's, it's banging. Good. Yeah. And then he did a regular, like in the oven, turkey or whatever. Um, yeah. So it was cool. So that was under 10 people. Uh, for those of you that are asking. Of course, of and, course. I wouldn't expect yeah. you to say anything different. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. But if so, so yeah. Jay would be the one to say it. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah. Damn. And then uh, Thursday was just in the, we went to the in-laws. and uh, So, my in-laws, they don't do like a whole turkey. They just, they like to do turkey wings. Um, wow. And then, nice. Yeah and, then, yeah. and then my wife uh, made... Um, Wow, what is this called? I forgot now. Well, I forgot, but it's meat. Um, and then we ate that. I never had that either. Or it's been a while, I think. And then that's it. And mashed potatoes, you know, potato salad, all that stuff. Your wife's Dominican yeah. too? No, she's Ecuadorian. Mm. So it's yeah. like an Ecuadorian dish? Um, no, no, no. I think, oh, I remember now. It's roast beef. Oh. Yeah, roast beef. Nice. Yeah. Oh. yeah. That's about it. Cool. Just chilling. We seen Ant's crib. Ant's crib was lit. Yo, yeah, word. He definitely like, got more than Tepe up in that house, but he lives hey, in Georgia. Man. So, so okay. I said, you, see? Yeah, you see this? You see what you I see say? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, this dude watched the Six Nine documentary on on, on <laughs> Hulu. <laughs> Hulu. <laughs> Hulu. That's <laughs> it. What, I, what I tell you, yo. Oh, He's man. in Georgia. He lives in the in the free land. Oh, yeah, man. nah. Uh-oh. I'm not saying how many people was here, but yeah, now nah, we had we had more than enough food, yo. It was it was straight. Uh, I fried a turkey. A, that was the first country. time. He's good. 
Oh, you fried it? Were you scared? Because yeah. you, you, you see these videos of them dropping in and like a whole fire comes out or whatever. Nah, I mean, I just... You were straight? I looked it up on YouTube, yo. Find everything <laughs> on there. <laughs> they Wait, say you're you supposed to drop it in slow, slow, right? Yeah, you just do drop it in slow. It was straight. I mean, it came out good, man. That joint was banging. That was the first time I did it. That was the first thing that went. It was done. Yeah, yeah the, the, the reasoning behind fried turkey is it seals the juices in, right? Right. So, yeah. so, so it's so, not dry. You know how when you bake a turkey, a lot of people got to take it out, take juice from it, put it back on the mm-hmm. turkey and put it back in so that it stays moist. A fried turkey, it seals it. Mm-hmm. So you're saying once you take it out, it's actually juicy from the gate. You know what I'm saying? So that's that's why yeah. some people really rock with it. Yeah, yeah, I rock with it. First time I had it, I was like, wow, I need to have this more yeah. often. I bet people didn't think they were going to get culinary tips from Jared Sanders on, on the podcast. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? This is why we're the fastest. You can tell who's the cook at home, huh? <laughs> yeah, of all trades, master of something, man. Something. <laughs> <laughs> what were you up to, man? You just had something simple at the crib? Yeah, no, nah, we went to the, uh, did the did the in-laws thing, man. Um, I also stayed behind quite a bit. Cause I uh, had some work to do, man. So I was, you know, right in making sure some edits got done right, you know, so that everything went off without a hitch uh, for the for the tape. So right. I mean, yeah, that's that was pretty much my time, man. I my mind was focused on finishing some things up. Um, mm. So I ain't even really get to do the whole. Hey, fun and games, laugh, laugh, all that. I was like, yeah, <laughs> okay, well, I got some things to do. So. Um, but I mean, the, the food was good, um, <laughs> so, so that's what you know. What I'm saying like that was what it was all about. I was like, okay, the food. Long as, cause see, what's bad is like if you're not really actively involved, and then the food is trash. Cause then you like you had a wasted day. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, like I didn't basically. have. So, <laughs> yeah. I, had a, I had a I had a solid day. It was redeemable. You know it was productive. Yeah, exactly. Right. We yeah. had a lot of a lot of music drop on Black Friday. Yeah, I, I don't know why people drop commercial projects on Black. We had Black. your joint. I mean, yeah, that see, joint I did it for free. You know what I'm saying? Right. Like, cause cause <laughs> I always felt like I always felt like everybody and their mama trying to buy something, right? On Black Friday. Right. So I was like, okay, well, let me provide a contrast and give them something that doesn't cost them anything other than, you know, to dig a little bit. You know what I'm saying? I gotta, I gotta go get it. But uh yeah, I mean everybody is plugging them all year everybody got a black friday deal everybody got a black friday special That's right. like, look, i got this tape and it's free you know what i'm saying like so you should get it because i'm the only one that's not trying to get you to buy something so like you should yeah. come this, way. this like, is your third this is the third tape right from for black friday uh yeah this is the third black friday joint um this is overall the fifth tape i've done with g-o-n oh, okay um, and then i've done two albums so it's seven projects with g-o-n wow wow, wow. pumping them out that's what's up man yeah there was a lot of projects who dropped uh hurt drop hurt right? hurt and just the messenger drop young c young yeah. c oh young c drop i didn't know that brian t i'm about to check uh-huh. that out yeah i heard the brian t um i heard uh, brie kane kasari uh, yeah brie kane uh, that's a good amount. It's huh? a holy day, man. Yeah, <laughs> no, right? A lot of Christmas <laughs> dropped on Black Friday. Ain't Glory to God. God. Yeah, better be thankful. I yeah, I ain't seen not a man, real secular joint trying to push for Black Friday. <laughs> <laughs> Y'all dominated that day. <laughs> Straight up. That's dope. That's dope. Yo, Jimmy, I saw you in the Tesla on Thanksgiving, or was it the day after? Oh yeah, what's that about? You, oh, yeah. was you, was, you was talking trash about my pastor Elon. Nah, man, you know what it was. Uh, <laughs> wait, what was I talking trash about Elon? Hold up, you was like, I don't know that the car takes too long to charge or something like that. Oh yeah, dog, forty five minutes. But I mean, so, it is what it wait, is, right? But first That's off, cool? tell me how you got that Tesla. Oh, it wasn't mine. It wasn't mine. That, my oh, my daughter came from the Bay, and uh-huh. uh, her and her boyfriend, and so he rented the car. And uh, oh, he rented a Tesla, yeah. He rented it. And wow, so, he's trying um, to show off crazy, right? Oh, is this no, the first who, time I was in the back seat? What you mean? How was I showing off in the back seat? No, I'm oh, saying the, the boy, oh, boy, oh, boy, he's trying to come <laughs> show it <laughs> off crazy. First time you met him, <laughs> you know what I mean? Uh, nah, nah, I met him before. Oh, oh okay, okay, yeah. I was about to say, yo, let us know. 
we come in strapped. <laughs> hey, man, you, you the ops for real, bro. You telling on yourself, <laughs> right? right, right. It's right California, see? bro. It's California. He talking about we coming straight. Like, like more than ten people with the crazy. It's like, bro. Whoa, whoa, whoa. <laughs> He's the DJ Vlad. He's the <laughs> this dude. This dude like that. You remember that one time? Up. Like you remember that one time? We go with the, yeah? <laughs> yo, hey, yo. Hey, as which is the dude will be like, all right, everybody come out. They got us. They got us. <laughs> <laughs> Why are you talking about us New Yorkers like that, man? <laughs> Yo, it's facts. Stuff. It's in the podcast. It's on the podcast. <laughs> I think it was like episode oh, six. Fact <laughs> check. <laughs> <laughs> in the pod. <laughs> yeah, so, you know, so we, we was riding around. Um, They told me, they told me the, the trip took them like, an extra hour and a half just because they had to stop and charge. And so I was, oh. I just, for me, like, I don't, I don't go out of my city. I stay local. So, you know, investing in a Tesla, you know, it might be something I do, but for long, long distances, nah. I'm not waiting 45 minutes to Wait. recharge, bro. We but how many miles is it from your crib to the bay? I don't, I don't know. I think it's something like, it can't be more than 300. It's like, it's like four, four hundred, five hundred, something really? like that. Oh wow, something like miles? that. Miles? Yeah. Is that far? What the yeah. heck, for real? Yeah. See. The thing, the thing is, is that um, <laughs> you know, because you got you got to stop and charge and everything. And, oh, and then it. and then so you get you get four hundred per charge, right? You get four hundred miles something per charge. Like it depends on the car. Yeah. Well, I think that they got four hundred per per charge, but the problem is, is that that's like if you're driving with no AC. Um, no, uh, no radio. You know what I'm saying? Like, then you get 400. That. But if you got all that stuff on, you got the AC on like 64, uh, you know, and you listening to 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 uh, uh, Black Friday three, your your battery is gonna <laughs> you know die. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like halfway Definitely. through the trip, so you got to stop and charge for 45 minutes, and then you know get be back on your way. So it took them a little wow. longer. Than 385 longer. miles. And you got to yes. find a charging station too, right? So they got, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, they got them at um at every rest stop, like when you're on the highway. They, they yeah. got them. But um, when when that video that you guys saw, we went to a spot that was local that came up in the map, and then when we got there, it wasn't a Tesla charging station. So I guess it's different. I don't know. I didn't. I didn't. I didn't try to charge or anything. That's just what he said. He said, "Oh, it's not a Tesla, so I can't charge here." So we had to go to another joint. Which was oh, a few months so. away. He was like running out of juice too. And it's free. Like, it's free. So then I was like, you gotta pay for Nah, that. you gotta. I think you gotta pay. Yeah. So for the model, he had oh. a, he had like a Tesla card or something. I don't. I don't know. No, the Tesla card is the the key for the three because you were in the three, right? The model three. The, Bro, the little I was, the little cars. The little I, was, sedan. I was enjoying the ride. <laughs> yeah, it's a sedan. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, so I'm assuming it's a small. Like one. I said, I was in the back seat. <laughs> yeah. So that's the key, the card, but um. When you go to a supercharger to charge from the Model Three on, unless you bought a new car, you you are getting charged uh, for it when you use it. Okay. If you if you had bought it like a year ago, any uh, car other than the three, then it comes included for free. It's unlimited. Mm. Yeah. See, J J J's a spokesman Jay's for Tesla. Yeah. 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 I mean, that's apparent. That's apparent. Yeah. He, he, <laughs> he Lincoln bio. Lincoln bio. Yeah. <laughs> it's <what come>. it's <laughs> right up. Yeah. And then another thing is that in California, it was cool though. Yeah, in California, their chargers are uh, version two, um, and then Tesla's slowly uh, rolling out version three, which charges like uh, you know hundreds Quicker? of kilowatts. Yeah, kilowatts per second. Yeah. So I'm assuming that they, that's what they're gonna be working on next. Like yeah, faster. Yeah. yeah, that was that was that was like my only thing. But like, that's what you expect, right? You charging like yeah, it's yeah. not gonna be super fast. Right. But, um, Welcome to capitalism, fam. Like, uh, right, right. I remember right. Um, when, like, this is 006, I was working at Comcast, right? And Fios was on the horizon, right? Let's they, go. They didn't arrive, but they were on the horizon. And so Comcast, I remember I was sitting in a meeting, and at that time, I think the fastest internet speed they had was like eight megabits a second or something like that, right? Wow. Mm -hmm. And then what they said is, they said Fios is offering something like 60 megabits a second. So what we're going to do in the areas that are going to have files, we're going to give them a boost 
up to 60 megabits per second. So the point is, they already had the mm-hmm. upgrade on tech right. on stuck. You know what I'm saying? Like mm-hmm. they were like, just in case the competition get here, we got the, you know what I'm saying? We got the pivot from that. Right, so right. Tesla, they they not building version three. B. Like them joints is available right now. <laughs> <laughs> That's going to be a download, right? <laughs> I mean, <laughs> just a technically, bit. technically they do have to change the stations. Mm, there's right. only uh, there's only one in Vegas, which they just uh, constructed. Um, but the fact that maybe in the cars themselves are capable of version three right now. Yes. Like all it is is a software update and then you're good. For sure. No, yeah. no, I, I'm I'm aware, bro. I already got stock yeah. in the company, bro. You know? Let's go. <laughs> Let's, Let's go. go. Yo, yo, my money doubled. <laughs> yo, word. My yo, I more. doubled up already. Let's yo, see if man. Lee Auto. Let's see if Lee Auto and Neo comes in and uh, 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 uh and takes over the game. The oh, question man, is gotta be... take over. They just need to flip my money. Gonna be with a comp at. Like the question is gonna be. Who the comp is because that's what's going either that's what's going to broker down the price of tesla lower if they get viable competition because it's going to incentivize them doing so to make themselves competitive mm-hmm. and right. they do that then you start investing in the competition too so like yep. if, if they start dropping their price i'm looking for who they dropping it for right like mm-hmm. i'm gonna be like okay let me throw some money over there too just in case yeah yeah right yeah, so right now, um, Neo seems to be the competitor only because uh, number one, their cars are high quality. They're in China, obviously, but they have something interesting where you can change the battery um, within a couple minutes of the car, and it's a free service for now. So with Tesla, you don't, you can't do that, you know. So imagine you run out of juice, or you're running out of juice. Yo, I'm gonna be here. Switch my battery. All right, cool. Done. Five minutes, and then we out again. That's pretty wild. Oh, so you don't have to charge. You just switch, swap out the battery. Just keep mm-hmm. swapping out battery. Oh, yep. that's dope. Now, yeah. Jimmy in, in Cali, yeah, didn't my, they just, just pack- wrote that in my notes? Just so you know. <laughs> <laughs> Let me yeah. watch this. I, the Neo. I, I mean, yeah, I'm not yeah. a, I'm not a financial advisor, so please don't take my advice. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, Jimmy, what, wasn't they saying in Cali, too, that they're, they, they're going to have a law like by 2035 oh. or 2030? Like It's not going to. It's already passed yeah oh it already got passed yeah by 2030 all car and there's no more uh combustion engine everything has it's to be, gonna be like mad max out here though yeah. watch me <laughs> that's yeah. that's what makes me look forward to them stocks because there's it's gonna be no choice at that yeah. point same that's thing with england england also did the same thing really they're phasing out all their uh you know internal combustion everything has to be clean energy by 2033 or something like that let's go yeah. No, nah, but that's you know what that's what's crazy is I think a lot of people think it's gonna be the worst thing ever, right? But like I said, these auto companies already have these things down the pipeline. Mm-hmm. Like they're adjusted to these trans transitions anyway. They just at this point, they like, yo, we're making money off of cars and running off of oil. So like I'm not just gonna give them an electric car right now. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, right, right. Like, like BP is working on wind energy. Mm-hmm. You know, they not they not they're just not moving it as fast because there's no real urgency to do so. So right. make no mistake about it. General Motors is already starting to transition to electrical. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. For sure. Now. For sure. Yeah. Isn't GM tied to one of those companies? Isn't um. S- well, GM already has their own electric uh, vehicles out. Yeah. On, GM on the had the, they, they had the first electric vid- vehicle, didn't they? And then they just killed it. Um, what, I'm not the sure. that's still nah, out. I was before that, yeah. It was, was it? Uh, that yeah, yeah. Really I saw a documentary like on it. No, nah. not really selling like that. Like, it wasn't, yeah. but yeah, you yeah, said because they just kind of transitioned it to the to like that. Uh, the caddy, I, I just recently seen more, yeah, yeah. So they got the Hummer, they're coming out with the Hummer as their you know, first you know, full on fledged electric vehicle. Mm. Um, and looks then, like it was the, the GM EV1, is the yeah. Original. That's like yeah, long uh, like in the nineties, right? Yeah, three yeah, three wheels. Ugly like the Kobe they, twos, man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's, that's what happened. Like it might have been like, like innovation be ugly. Tesla was one of the first innovations that was like, oh, this kind of cool looking. You know what I'm saying? Right, yeah. right, right. A lot right. of this was like, what? Yeah, uh, it's what ugly. Ugly thing. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yep. Yep. And then yeah. uh, not Ford uh, is using their Mustang line. Yeah. 
to oh, come I saw out that. Of, uh, yeah. electric. But it's an SUV. It's, it's not like a you know the sports car or whatever. Yeah, it's like you uh, reminded me to throw a little money in for it. <laughs> it's like a, like a hatchback, right? Yeah, yeah, like a little a crossover. That's gonna be know, cool. yeah. I mean, it looks cool with no growl. <laughs> right, that's what a lot of people are saying. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Ooh, yeah. Imagine that a conversation went from a Christian <laughs> rapper Lee talking about stocks and electric cars. <laughs> that's how we do. Look, Yo, that's how we do. We just be all over. This podcast yeah. got ADD, man. We don't yeah, stick yeah, to yeah, yeah. everywhere. <laughs> <laughs> That's how yeah. it is. It is. Yo, Ford is up sixteen percent this last uh, thirty days. Oh, I know. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I had, but I sold. I don't believe in them. Word? What? Yeah. Wasn't they the They're only late. company? It's Wasn't they the I'm only? Ford. Ford's been pretty steady for for decades, though. Yeah, I'm up seventy percent right now. But ain't Weren't it crazy they that their oh, stock okay. is only seventy do- seven do- seven seven or eight dollars? Huh? It's pretty crazy that the stock has hasn't gone hasn't even broke ten dollars ever like that. Mm. Yeah, but that's because old people still be investing in it for their safe uh, retirement fund. Right, right, right. So you yeah. know what I'm saying they got to keep it feasible for that population to continue to invest. Well, we'll see what happens in ten years. Yeah, I was saying, uh, Jay, weren't they the only company that didn't take bailout money? Oh, back in like oh eight oh nine whatever. Yeah, um, I think you're right. Some- yeah, I think you're right. They, yeah, they dug themselves out. They were like, "No, nah, yeah. we don't need that." They pulled themselves up by the bootstraps, huh? Look at yeah, that. I think Republicans were arguing how okay with Obama giving them that bailout, but meanwhile Ford was able to get out of it, and then GM obviously took the money, yeah, you know? right, and bought so, back stocks, probably. Yeah, pulled back. So yeah, <laughs> I mean, yo, Magas were cool with this Wall Street bailout, though, huh? Earlier this year, they, they weren't conservative at all, right? Like, bro, they, yo, Magas. They're cool with anything that serves their self interest. Like, <laughs> that's, just, that's just what it is. It's like, oh, okay. So they say it's both they sides. The language. Okay. Word. You like him? Okay. Like, that's what I leave it at. I'm like, oh, y'all. Oh, y'all are those type of people. Okay. Cool. Right. <laughs> right. right. Like they have their own code, right? Like their own kind of culture in a way. You know, I mean, I, it's obvious, you know, just from conversations with, with people I find uh, to be, you know, intelligent people. They're not they're, they're not concerned with their leadership's uh, level of uh, decorum or 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 uh, etiquette. They care more about whether or not their self-interest is served. Mm. Right. So they don't they don't care if somebody's a jerk saying it. You know what mm. I'm saying? Right. Like it's right. just like, yo, America wanted this jerk in here. So you're going to get all the jerkness. And, and and I'm cool with that as long as you give me what I'm looking for, um, which is which is atypical, right? Because I used to always feel like like now America has this weird um, I want to say fetish with like um, righteousness, right? There's like oh we want our we want like now now it's like Joe Biden is the appointed nominee. Yes, the savior has arrived, right? And I'm thinking to myself. Do y'all see how y'all talk to each other every day? Do y'all read the comment sections on like any news website? Like y'all see how y'all deal with each other and y'all mad because the current president of the United States is a jerk. Like you you mad? Like that's this what you see every day. You know what I'm saying? Like I'm sure you hear worse in New York traffic right now. Like (laughs) California traffic. So it's like, oh, so so now we want a virtuous leader though. Okay. Right. Yeah, right. I, yeah. So I leave it where it is. I vote libertarian. Next, mm, gang, gang. <laughs> Another one. He's gang. That's you. And <laughs> you see it? <laughs> <laughs> yo, yo, you know what's interesting? There was a MAGA that was shooting at Lecrae recently. <sighs> oh, why are you shooting Rising at Gray? Oh, why are you shooting yeah. at the goat? Yeah. Oh, <laughs> show me your right. hat, man. Show me your hat. <laughs> I know he got it on. <laughs> yeah. Oh, oh, all kinds of links oh, in bio. Oh, <laughs> man. <laughs> Talk to me, Bryson. <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah, I just thought it. I thought that was weird. Like, people be weirdos, man. Like, <laughs> like I. that's all. Like, I, I kind of was like, I mean, and we are privy to, you know, some of the, the chat that we all in. Right. Like, I just think that's weirdo behavior. Like, it's like, bro, 
Why? Yeah. You right. know what I'm saying? Like, why? For you, you guys that don't know, so what he uh, say? Bryson Gray, uh, he's a who is he? MAGA, MAGA rapper, right? Yeah, I don't yeah, know much about him. I don't really know much about him, to be honest. Mm. He's CHH. Um, he, he, he blew up because of the whole MAGA thing, the red hat yeah, that's thing. Cool. That's, that's cool. like, he's, yeah. he's, he's, he's kind of like a novelty rapper right now. Yeah. yeah. Um, but for CHH or no? No, it's MHH, he's not, bro. He's not in MAGA, MAGA hip hop. MAGA hip hop. MAGA hip hop. They got the old. They came over from the nine nine to two thousands. Yeah, yeah. Girl. Yeah, well, he was he was dissing for y'all don't know out there. He was dissing Lecrae. He said Lecrae's a, fake, a fake Christian. Christian. Yeah. Fake Christian, man. Yeah, cause he cause he uh, support Democrats, but don't say nothing when the gays kissing. All right. Like right. I was like, <laughs> I was like, word. Like that's that's what make you a fake. Right, right. Oh, okay. <laughs> like, <laughs> he said, he said, oh, okay. <laughs> All right. Yo, but you know what's what's crazy about that that comment, that bar, that statement is that like Trump and everybody in his administration have been saying that he's the most pro LGBT president in history. Okay. Where's the bar for that though? You know, your president didn't say nothing nothing about that. Like, mm. how come he's not a fake Christian? No, I mean, I don't yeah, know if many people are sitting up here thinking he's a Christian at all. I think, you know what I'm saying? I think, I think what's happening is Christians are trying to align their belief system with their ideology right. as opposed to the other way around. Like, and so like, I don't know anybody. I, it's crazy. Like I'd be sitting up here talking to, to believers or, or declare believers in the faith. Right. And I'm always like, yo, you think, you think he a Christian for real though? Like, and they don't know. And it's like, oh, but you, oh, you banging your set hard though. You know what I'm saying? Like it's mag over on this block. And I'm like, so, so you written in the rock with somebody who calls some two Corinthians? Like, it's like, <laughs> it's like two Corinthians? I just commented that. <laughs> yeah, we just talking about it. It's like, oh, and Paula White out here, the angels from Africa are coming. <laughs> Yeah, like, I see Marcus hey. Rogers defending that. I'm like, how do you defend that? <laughs> listen, I don't listen. I, I'm gonna be honest. I can't speak on that. I don't know that man. So like, I, God bless him, man. Like, yeah. <laughs> I'm, I'm, like, I, Amen. Like, I just be trying to stay out of the way on some of this stuff. I'm like, I'll yeah. speak when God, I sign. I, I, I heard you. Um, I heard you on. Uh, was it a- Evolution? Yeah, on your, on your mixtape. You had you had hard. touched on some. Uh, some topics, yeah. some political topics. Yeah. That's one of my favorite joints because it was yeah. so balanced. And it's like you was kind of pointing fingers at both of them. Like, y'all, oh, yeah. like, y'all doing? Yeah, I got a I got a I got a clip for both sides, man. Like, <laughs> like, but I think I think I've always been consistent like that in my career, though. Like, I feel like I've challenged the church, I've challenged mm-hmm. the world like consistently. So, like to me, they can't say I'm picking sides. You know what I'm saying? Like. If if when people was down talking Obama, I came into church. I was like, oh, y'all not praying for him? Mm, you know what I'm saying? Like, right. and when you know Trump now, Trump ain't even sitting. You got you got every black pastor in in Eastern America got their hands on Trump's shoulder praying over him. It's like, right. oh word. Mm, so this what y'all right. want? Right. Like, right. so for me, I'm just like, oh, okay, let me let me address these blind spots in the room. Mm-hmm. Cause obviously y'all, y'all not checking them. So like Reagan or Clinton speech, keep it G. They always clapping. It don't. It don't right. matter who it is. Mm-hmm. Like, like so for me, I just I find peace in knowing that a lot of the perspective I have is balanced. You know what I'm saying? Right, right. Like, it's like yo, y'all, y'all could. I salute Trump if he do something that's noble or commendable. I salute. You know what I'm saying? I salute Biden for the same reason. You know what I'm saying? It's like to me when we get uh, catty and petty is when we start thinking that like on the people that are anti-Trump will say, what did Trump do for anybody? You know what I'm saying? And I'm like, well, I'm pretty sure you could ask a lot of people and they would say right. that these kinds of things for them. Right. Right. And then like, you know what I'm saying? You got people that, you know, voted Biden in and they're like, yeah, we got Trump out. And I'm thinking, now what? <laughs> what did you bring in though? Right. You know what I'm saying? Like you, you cool with that? Like, all right, cool. I mean, that dude been there for 40 plus years. Like, and and now you want him to be the president, though. Like, 
So my thing is like that binary political system, man, they could throw all that in the garbage from my concern, man. So mm-hmm. um, it's it's time for some new blood. But, you know, that's not going to happen absolutely, because the current system is voting to keep itself around. You know what I'm like right. it's like what Trump, Trump is actually a candidate, like one of the first candidates I've ever seen say he thinks that Congress should have term limits. Mm. Imagine that. Right. Like, that would be good. That. The dude people want like out of there. It's like, yo, y'all mad at me. I've been here for four years. Right. Like, look at them. They've been here for 40 years. Yeah. Yeah. I like that he called yeah. out Biden on his like 40 plus years because it really puts things into perspective. You know, yeah. like, what has this man done in this time? What did he do during the Obama administration? You know? And not um, to say I expected him to do anything during the Obama administration because he was just a VP. You know what I'm saying? Like, but his congressional record, though, yeah. like before you were the VP, like you were a senator, though. Right. And, and I'm sitting up here like, OK, so what was your record then? Like, mm-hmm. like, let's talk about that. Like, because because right now, you know, when you're the VP, you just presidential support, supposedly. You know what I'm saying? Right. Like, so it's not like you writing bills yourself or proposing bills. But let's let's go back. 12 years ago, who was mm-hmm. Joe Biden then? You know mm-hmm. what I'm saying? Like, who was he then? And if you can't say you know, then what difference do you expect now? Right. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Like, that's all. Like, I leave it there. Like, I, I mean, my life going to be straight either way. Um, right. You know what I'm saying? But it's a lot of people that wanted to vote Trump out instead of vote Biden in. It's like, what's and that? Yeah. Mi- yeah. To my 72 million. <laughs> yeah. Well, uh, well allegedly. Like, no, okay. <laughs> yep. Yeah. Like, right. We're, think, like, we're still waiting on the verdict. We're still waiting on the verdict for that. We're still waiting. Oh, no. uh, I mean, electoral I've college and all that. You know? Yo, I've said this already. Like, in order for American democracy to preserve, preserve itself, they cannot let this election be overturned, though. No. You know what I'm saying? Like, they can't. Now, now from the side of truth, you know, and integrity, yeah, you would be like, nah, they should overturn it if it's real. But, you got to understand how that looks in uh, the eyes of foreign nations. You got to right. understand what that looks like to our enemies. It's like, oh, y'all don't even have stability in y'all nation right mm-hmm. now. You know what I'm right. saying? Also, yeah. So uh, now we get to form our alliances. You know what I'm saying? As long as we pay the tax, we keep mm-hmm. doing business over there with y'all because y'all don't even know who y'all leader is. Like, So yeah. <laughs> to me, I feel like the people that's in charge is going to be like, yeah, we got enough evidence to say Biden stole, but we got millions of people that definitely feel like they they voted and their vote counted, right? right. Mm-hmm. Like, and if you want to strip them of that, then you probably effectively eliminate the voting populace of like a large portion of this country if you just say, "Oh yeah, guys, uh, so those votes that you think you had, yeah, they don't they don't count because." Somebody used the computer and faked a lot of them. You know what I'm <laughs> like, yeah, like, nah, yeah, your posts yeah. don't count no more. So, uh, yeah, it's Trump again. Just, just well, get I ready. Mean, like, according to Bryson, right? Uh, I, I, uh, I went back because I, I heard the song and I'm like, all right, let me check this dude out. Right? He got me. You know what I'm saying? He got me with with that inch, with him dissing Lecrae. I was like, all right, what's this dude about? <laughs> next thing you know, the next video after MAGA is forever. <laughs> uh, with a Z, MAGA's with a Z, right? Nah, it's just MAGA is forever. So I'm, I was kind of surprised right? by that, man. I, I I don't know how that is entertain. You know what I mean? Like how well, he had a MAGA hat. MAGA. He had a MAGA hat and the Lecrae disc. Now yeah. he had a MAGA Kango hat though. He had a whole oh yeah, he got the official <laughs> joint. He had a whole MAGA Kango and the young dudes was was next to him, and I was like, "What are y'all doing here?" <laughs> <laughs> he got another joint that's like a Yosemite Sam type of joint, like oh, nah. huge bucket hat, like huge, <laughs> wow, caricature huge. type. Yeah, keep y'all, keep people name, keep that man name off of y'all minds, man. Like I don't understand it. Like if if Lecrae wasn't ordained to be here, man, I, I just don't think he'd be swimming this long at the top of the pool. Right. right. Like, I mean, he may make faulty decisions. He may be shaky at times, but it's like, y'all ain't nothing y'all could do to knock him off, though. You know what I'm saying? Like, he's still here. So you got to start wondering, like, why? You know what I'm saying? Like, why is he still here? Why is it with all the hate and the vitriol, he's still in this spot? And so, like, I genuinely feel like 
Lecrae was called to a place. I feel like sometimes he makes some decisions that make people question his motives. But I do believe that Lecrae loves the Lord, though. You know what I'm right, saying? Right. I, I don't, I don't, Amen. I think he's trying to navigate how to be somebody who loves the Lord in a world that, that doesn't he opened up. Well, not nah, it ain't even just that don't, it's like he opened that up. Like he was like, I'm a rapper who's Christian, not a Christian rapper. Like he created the dividing line. He created the rules where there were none. And right. then he kind of had to like navigate how to communicate that to right. the people that helped build his platform, but also reach the people that didn't even know he was a Christian rapper. You know what I'm mm-hmm. saying? Like, so he has, he's had to juggle that. And un- honestly, if I had my assessment, I came into the game late on Cray. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Like, so, I came in in 2015. Lecrae was already Lecrae. Lecrae already was multi Grammy winning Lecrae. So I felt it was kind of odd because I didn't feel like he had to do what he did. You know what I'm saying? I was like, oh, I mean, your platform's growing. You want to meet other people, just go meet other people. You know what I'm saying? Like when you start creating the distance between where you are to where you're going, what it feels like is, old boy left his old friends back in school because he thought he was going to get to the cool table. And when he got there, he realized he wasn't the cool kid. Yeah, no right. And right. then it was like, it was like, nah, you, you still ain't cool. Or he didn't like, or he didn't like, the, or he didn't like the cool kids. He got around him or, and was like, Oh, I don't like, oh. <laughs> or, or, yeah. Like, it's like he grad. you know how you get that like social hierarchy, right? You grad, you the eighth grader in middle school, like you the top of the class. Right. And then you yeah. go to high school and you back on the bottom again. Like, yeah. so, so I think like Lecrae became like student body president in middle school. <laughs> and then he hopped over to the high school class and they was like, who are you? You're a freshman over here, dog. Right. Like, who are you right now? <laughs> like, well, I'll give you a swirly right now. Like, and he was like, <laughs> he was like nah, I like my old friends. You know what I'm saying? Right. Like, right. So, so now is that period of transition. And this ain't even me trying to clown them because I feel like there are people who've done it effectively. Like they just never really, they never really claimed it to begin with. So they got a chance mm-hmm. to move however they felt like moving. Like like right. Toby got to move how he felt like moving because he right. never claimed it. He just was. Right. And then like Craig was like, Craig was on the shame. I'm a Christian. Yeah, I'm a, yeah, hey, yeah, if, yeah. If, if, you rap, if you rap on producers that's not Christian, like then you, I'm like, oh, so you was the ops, right? And then like, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like now, you, like when you getting over there, like you don't even want to tell people you know people. You know what I'm saying? Like, and that was and that was like, kind of like the standard that he set. You know what I'm saying? Right, like, you're not supposed right. to rap over secular beats, and now you're hanging out with secular artists. The same fans that that supported you are not calling you out on the same thing. Yeah. And so I think I just think he never fully fleshed out what he was trying to do. Right. Right. Mm. And and that sometimes happens when you jump into something and you don't really think about it. Like and then you get in, you get in and it's hot. It's like, oh, oh, I, maybe I should have. You know what I'm saying? Maybe I should have took this jacket out. off before I hopped in there. You know what I'm saying? Like, you don't know. And I feel like he just didn't know. And yeah. so, like, he thought he understood, which is kind of like you see it all the time. Right. Um. I had a homie, uh, Pastor Vic in New Jersey said he used to be uh, he used to be formerly in the streets. And then right. um, when he got saved, he kept going back to the trap house thinking, you know, what I'm saying like he was going to be able to preach to the people that he used to bag up with. And they was like, yo, like, what are you doing here? Like, get out, like, go home. You know what I'm saying? Like, and sometimes we get dudes that be saved and they be like, oh man, I want to give you Jesus. You know what I'm saying? To the people that they left behind. And that world over there is like, yo, we don't want him though. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Like, we don't want him. So so whatever you think you finna do, it's not right. gonna work. You know what I'm saying? Like, so yeah. he realized that and was like, dang, man, maybe I didn't have to do all of that. Like, and I think that's where he's at right now. Yeah, mm-hmm. right, right. We had view beats on uh just a few was it two weeks ago? Two just about two yeah, two weeks ago. And he was talking about a lot of the like Satanism and voodoo that goes on like in the studio. So I could imagine Craig coming up there trying to change the atmosphere. Those would be like, Man, get out of here. Straight up, messing up the seance yeah. and all that. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Bro, go back to go back to your JV team. 
You know what I'm saying? Hey, this man, is varsity over here. Ouija. Hey, man, we got Ouija boards over here. Get that cross man. out of here. <laughs> it's interesting because um, aside from Bryson's uh, comments in his in his, in his song, um, there's a lot of people that feel similar to him. Like Lecrae's fake. Lecrae's got one foot in, one foot out. Lecrae's not. Yeah. They, they f- I don't know. It's like they, they feel like he, like you said, like he just abandon the faith kind of thing and i don't i don't i don't see that correlation i don't know how that how that works yeah i don't get the abandoning the faith thing at all like the best correlation i used to think of is like you know how you was in a relationship with a girl for a long time and you like brought her around the family and all that and then um you know so your mama loved her and they, like your family embraced her mm-hmm. and then like you was kind of thinking um so yeah i'm a um yeah, she and I, we just, we not that no more. And then right. your mom be still like wanting her to come over when like birthday parties happen and stuff like that. So like Lecrae has become kind of like, he's kind of become like the, um, he, he, he built this relationship and this rapport and he got his family exposed to something. And now he was trying to like, with these features and these collabs, he's like, hey guys, this is my new girlfriend. Like, <laughs> and the Christian community was like, nah. Who? <laughs> right, right. Nah, we like the old nah, one. the old girlfriend. Like, yeah. where your, where your old? We like you know, the old Kanye, right? Yeah. yeah, and he and he was just like, oh, I thought y'all would like this. Like, I, 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 I never wanted, like, cause me and my wife in therapy. So like, I never want to make the negative assumption, right? Because some, we do that a lot. And that's what mm. assuming Lecrae is a fake Christian is. Like, you don't know. Like, there's no, right. you can't prove that. But what happens is because you have like little metrics in your mind about what are like ineffective personality types, ineffective uh, behaviors that people exude, you start to tell in your mind like, oh, he means to deceive people. Mm. And like, I'm like, I don't know if the goal is for him to deceive people. I just think he thinks he's doing the right thing, but meaning well and doing well are not always the same thing. You know what I'm saying? Like, and mad people do things that they think is the right thing and it turned out to be goofy and destructive. You know what I'm saying? Like, you didn't didn't mean for it to hurt nobody's feelings. And I think that's what happened. I don't think he meant like, oh yeah, I'm I'm gonna make these Christians mad. Yeah. Like, but but I do feel like when he started to make him mad, he also didn't handle it with grace. You know what I'm oh, saying? Yeah. So when people was like, Craig, you doing this, he started rapping about it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Remember he, he said that? He said he was kind of bitter when he said, like, yeah, y'all say I don't say Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Yeah, Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. And, and he had to apologize about that. Oh, like, it, it's like, I feel, but I feel like those are the natural stages of, like what what can happen if people un- misunderstand your motives? If you intend them to be uh, purely intended, and then people just are intent on finding the wrongdoing in what you do, like yeah. I feel like eventually you're gonna be like, nah, that's not what it is, and they're gonna keep saying, yes, it is, yes, it is, and you're gonna be like, hey, bro, hey, we 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 could run the fade out back, <laughs> like, like I said, but I said, like I told you it wasn't that, like, right. but if you're gonna keep on pressing my line. Like, yeah, we're going to have a talk. Like, it's, it's, you're not going to keep telling me what I'm doing if I know that's not what I'm doing. And I feel right. like that's what happened. Now, you had, uh, what was it, a couple months ago? Was it like two months ago? You had uh, put out a tweet about mm-hmm. CHH artists being more lyrical than Lecrae. Or that you can right. name uh, right. uh, a bunch of, I, I, I don't know what you said exactly, but something along can. that line. Yeah. So... Um, how did you feel about that? Like that tweet at that moment was, did you like, after the fact, were you like, ah, maybe I should have never tweeted that. Or were you like, I'm going to stand on that. I, that's how I feel. I'm coming from a, a fan's perspective as well as an artist. Like what was I the think, thought? I, I think the funny thing about the Christian space that we in is like mad people do not appreciate and value adult energy. Let's call it that. Like right. they don't, they don't appreciate and value adult energy. And what I mean is, like, oh, I said what I said, like, and then I explained <laughs> what I said, like, right. and people like were intent on misunderstanding what I said. And so they tried to reframe the conversation to make themselves feel better. Like, mm. 
I said, well, what happened is the crew actually asked who's the better rapper, NF or Lecrae? Or he said, uh, is NF a better rapper than Lecrae? And I said, he is. And then somebody eyeballs got big and they were like, what? (laughs) No way. And Lecrae had a better, better impact. All this. I was like, yo, that was was Jay's burner account. That wasn't the question, though. It wasn't the question. (laughs) Is NF the better rapper? And I said, yes, he did. And then they were like, no way. NF, all he makes is depressed music. And Lecrae's make better albums. I said, yo, check this out. Y'all are not understanding the question, though. Mm -hmm. Like, he said, is he a better rapper? And then somebody responded and said something. And I was like, honestly, I don't think he's a good rapper like that. Like, Mm -hmm. and so... When I, but then I said, I don't really think NF is either, but I don't think Lecrae is a good rapper like that. Right, now, right. some people took that as a dish, right? And I could see how, right. but I explained and expounded on what I meant by that. I was like, I'm thinking to myself, Missy Elliott is one of my favorite artists. Right. She can't rap like that, though. Right, but right, I right, right. She makes dope music. Like, I said Lecrae is the GOAT. I said he's all of those things. But I said, when it comes to rapping, but they hung on that one thing, right? Yeah, I was like, yeah, I was like, when it comes to rapping, like the skill of rapping. Um, and then I started getting on my soapbox because they kept trying to reframe the combo. I said, <laughs> Yo, check this out. I could name 50 rappers in this space that rap better than him. Like, and they were like, no, you can't. I said, I said, bro, I won't even name myself. Mm. Like, I'll name 50. Like, right. I named 50. And <laughs> He's a lot being petty <laughs> like no i wasn't being petty i look at it like this um if if you're the if you're the best basketball player in your middle school does that necessarily mean you're a good basketball player if you play against people from another school and they smoke y'all though like it sound cool mm, to right. be dope you know what i'm saying like kyle kuzma has a 40 point game in the nba right kyle kuzma has a 40 point game andrew bynum has a 40 point game would anybody consider that man one of the best players in the NBA? No, nope. <laughs> not. And that's okay. Like, there are aberrations that exist. You know what I'm saying? Like, things will pop up on the radar and people will be like, yo, that was a cool verse. But right. that don't mean that they're elite at that. Like, and so that was my thing. I was like, yo, I'm not saying he trash. Right. I just think based on my standard of what good is, not even great, good, he's not there. Right. He's not he's not at that bar like he's not if we're playing a game of pick up ball of the best rappers in the space and you got 50, 60 people there. He's probably going to be one of the last picked if if I was the captain. Right. 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 I'm not I'm not saying he can't, you know, I'm saying rap, but it's like it's just not it's not the same. It's just other people you you prefer. Nah, that's real though, man. That's real because, like, like for me, I'm a I'm a fan of uh, CNN. I'm a fan of Noriega. He's not the best lyricist at all. Not, not top 100. Not top 200. <laughs> not top 1,000. <laughs> but the dude is entertaining to me. You right. Know? Hey. He, he and Greg that's okay. nice. And that's okay. <laughs> yeah, Craig <laughs> nice. <laughs> I was just trying to tell them. I was like, it's okay. I know that's your favorite rapper. Like, I know he's made a great impact. Amazing. Awesome. That doesn't make him a good rapper, though. Right. Now, do you get DMs from those kind of those yo, kind of? Yo, I got somebody on Instagram. They sent me. I'm on a, following. Some dude is like, "Why is Why is Lecrae's name in your mouth?" I <laughs> said, "I said, block." Like, <laughs> <laughs> he ain't even respond. <laughs> I said the gift with Matumbo, like, blocking <laughs> like, oh. you know, like, yo, and it's not, it's not like I think he probably makes some of the best music in the space. You know what I'm saying? Mm. So it's really mm. not a diss. It's just like if there's a, a list of skill sets, the rapping one is lower than the other ones. You know right, what I'm saying? Right. I saw like it's like that in the world too. Yeah, yeah people want to hear what they want to hear though. Like yeah. I I mean, I'm like, yo, and I did say this though, because I did get a little pride for lying on lie to you. Um, <laughs> and but I was being dead serious though. Like I want I wasn't I wasn't capping when I said it. I said, yo, I kid you not, bro. If I got if somebody said Lecrae wanted me to rap on the record, that verse would get written in like five minutes. 
Like, right. but if somebody told me that Black Thought wanted me on the record, like it's gonna take me a little longer. You know what I'm saying? Like, right, right. <laughs> I'm not trying to get smoked. You know what I'm saying? Like, <laughs> you understand? There's a natural respect that you have for people that are elite at the craft, where you're like, yo, I'm not just mailing this in. But I know, like, if he wanted me on the record and he wanted me to rap, it's like, ah, oh, man, this verse is done. Like, it's done before, and I know that if if our verses were put next to each other, like anybody who really understands the art form is not going to be yeah. like, he got you, Jay. No, he didn't. Don't yeah. lie to you. Yeah. <laughs> like that's, that's all. That's all. And it, it also <laughs> seems like the, the fans try to put like this G O M versus reach records. Yeah, what's up with that? Like, Yo, I oh, think that's there's some tension or something. I'm like, I don't see I it. Mean, there. I, I wouldn't know. I wouldn't know if it's tension. Um, I mean, they collab. They, they made a song together. Did they? Yeah, Lecrae and Bizzle. Oh, yeah, they, they, no, that they, don't count. That don't they, count. Like, listen, oh, that one don't they, count. How come? That, that don't. That won't ever count. Like, <laughs> as, a, as a as a fan of the culture, was oh, was that okay, on Lecrae's okay. album? As a, a, that won't that was, ever. That was count. Bizzle. No, that was no, on no, Bizzle's no. album, right? Yeah, it was on Bizzle Giant, and yeah. and go back and listen to that verse. Enough said. I'm not. I'm not gonna say no. <laughs> <laughs> that don't count. But like, Dayton had uh, some. Reach. Dayton had some reach artists on his. Uh, yeah, he had a few in one project. day. Well, that's what uh, I'm saying. That that that's why I asked about was it on the Crazy album because it's never the other way around. Never, never that, never that. Mm. That is that is a fact. But again. Like I can't put onus on them though. Like if yeah. you don't want to rock with us on the record, you don't want to rock with us on the record. Like yeah, I don't, I don't know the why. Like I said, yeah. I can't make the negative assumption. Right, but right, I, right. I can say we've never been on the record of theirs. Okay. You know, records of ours. So now when you put these tweets out, do you have like a damage control, like a biz, like, yo, what's going on? <laughs> There's like, don't say that. Yo, uh, you know. <laughs> put your phone down. Nah, well, biz, biz hit me and was like, hey, what's going on? Because he, 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 he don't got Twitter. Like, he don't have Twitter. Somebody like jacked his Twitter. Like, so he heard about it. And then he was like, so what happened? And I told him, and he was like, ah, man, you got to be more careful out here. Mm. Like, but that's it. Like, it wasn't no. Yeah. No, you I mean, what's done was what's done is done already. Apologize. Like, it's like, now I feel like if we had a working business relationship, like me and Cray or the people that reach or something like that had a working relationship, I feel like I would at that point be more inclined to say, yo, y'all, it wasn't that. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah, right. But. They don't. They don't want. To talk. Yeah, I never. I never get the sense that there's anything like any hostility or beef or anything like that. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, um, yeah nah. I, I, mean, I, I never. I never got that impression. But yeah. even let's just say, even like on on the hip hop on a rap level, like yeah. GOM could hold could hold their weight. You know what I mean? Like everybody's a shooter when it comes to spitting. You know what I'm saying? When it comes to rapping, mm-hmm. like everybody could hold their own weight. You know? Yeah, um, I think so too. I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't think that, that that's a problem at all. Yeah. No, no, not over here. I don't think so. Yeah. Yeah. No, no, no. Maybe that's why they don't want him on the album. <laughs> you can't kill me on my beat. Right. You don't want <laughs> like, to renegade. It's wild. Right. Yeah. No, nah, I think what it, what happened though is. I think we just realized that we communicate to two completely different fan bases. Absolutely. Mm-hmm. Right. I think I think that's really where they may struggle with bringing us on board. Um, is like, generally speaking, at a GOM show or something like that, the population that comes out to see us looks significantly different than the population that comes out to see them. So, mm. like, I feel like there may just be a, well, our, they may not, like, they may think we may not resonate with their fans in the same way, like, because mm. their fans are just a different type of fan. It's it's right. Motown and Stax. No, I was right. I was about to say more like a, uh, 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 that's just my opinion. It's Motown and Stax. That's what it is. Bad boy and loud. It's like, <laughs> right, uh, right. It's like Drake and Jeezy. Yeah. Like, <laughs> that's what I'm saying. Like <laughs> that's why I mean, like you got your bad boy, your shiny suits, but then you got loud with the woo Tims and yeah, all. Like, like the, I feel like the fan base at a Jeezy show would connect with Biz. 
Yeah. Uh, whereas the fan base at a, a Drake show may not. You yeah. Know like, but I feel like the fans at a Drake show, they might not, they might think Lecrae look cool. You know what I'm saying? Like, you, you know what I'm saying? Like, so I think it's, I think it's a population dynamic too. Like they know their numbers, they know their analytics. Yeah. They know what their population yeah. Looks like. So I can't assume why we not on their kind of records. Yeah. Yeah. Yo, somebody who's overrated, I mean underrated. Oh. <laughs> you thought it went over. I was like, okay. Under, oh, underrated. Yeah, yeah. I was like, oh, right, right, right. All right. All right. Sorry. <laughs> Is the man we're speaking to right now, the lyrical monster. <laughs> yeah. Gary, man. So sure. you you recently uh you recently dropped this project, Black Friday, uh well, three. Mamba Mentality, Black Friday three, right? Yeah. Um, so yeah, take us through that, man. Take us through what 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 made you go through that process of putting that? Was it like, yo, it's Black Friday, I gotta do this every year? Um, I missed y'all last year with it. Like I didn't do it last year because hope is though too. I thought we was gonna drop it on Black Friday last year. But, and that came um, out this year in February, right? Yeah, Around that time. Well, January. January. So, like, what happened is like Biz was like, nah, because we got to shoot videos and stuff like that. So let's just push the project to January. And so I was like, cool. So I missed out on giving people uh, Black Friday 3 at that time. Um, and then I probably was going to let y'all miss out on it this year too. But what happened is... I said, yo, I'm I'm tired of sitting. I dropped the album in January. I feel like rapping again. Um, and so I said, I'm going to just write a song a day for um, 21 days. I think that's what I said, like 14 days, something like that, 14 days. And wow. Aaron Cole was like, make it 30. And I said, oh, like make a song a day for 30 days. And I was like, cool, I'll do that. Like, and then so when I did, just, When did you make this decision? Um, The very... End of October. Oh, okay. Oh, wow. wow. So oh, race is recent. Yeah, wow. yeah. So well, like, you can you can tell it's recent because some of the references in, in the music. Yeah yeah, 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 yeah. Like, so I just started writing every day. Uh-huh. Like, and and I look when I get into writing mode, I look at it like riding a bike. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, you you may not you may not hop right back on the bike and be like amazing at it, but eventually you're like, oh, the muscle memory's back. You know what I'm saying? Right. And so for me, inspiration is a muscle. So when I get into like creative mode, I never start cold and then just heat up, you know what I mean? And then I'm just on fire. So ultimately these mixtapes, these like verses and stuff like that is me getting my mind ready to go um, to, to, to get into album mode. So um, I, I just felt like rapping, honestly. And uh, I started realizing once the material started getting fire, I was like, Oh, I gotta do something with this. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, I gotta, <laughs> I gotta do something with this. So Black Friday is normally like a five-song project, but um, I felt like overdoing it because the Lakers won the championship this year. <laughs> so right. um congrats so like, to y'all. Mamba mentality. Um, and I was like, yo, I'll make it 10 this time. You know what I'm saying? Like, and that's all. Like, I just wanted to to rap and do it really, really well. Um, and also, you know, there was that little, that little edge. From all those people that said I'm not qualified to speak on the Lecrae rapping, <laughs> <laughs> some motivation, <laughs> a little, a little bit. Like I won't <laughs> hold you. Like for like at least of a, a record, I was like, oh, I'm gonna show them. You know what I'm saying? Like, oh y'all, y'all think I'm playing around with y'all? Like, so yeah. You can tell from the wordplay too. Definitely, yeah, definitely I mean, that was, you put some effort like, into it. I was, I was like, nah, I'm. I'm in my bag now. Like, and once you start to see the finish line for me, like I turn all the way up. So like some of the most lyrical records on there were like some of the last records to be made. Mm. I, I was like, I'm heating up now. You know what I'm saying? Right. Like, you you can see the you can see the finish line. Yeah, <laughs> right? yeah. Like, oh, there it is. Like, oh, you know how Steph Curry shoot the three and then turn and start running. Right, the- right. <laughs> Don't even look. Yo, that's what happened. I was like, I'm like Okay, back up here. We we in there. <laughs> Let's go play defense now. Is, is that how you got the correlation with the Mamba mentality as well? Like, yeah, man. Um, I mean, Kobe's my favorite basketball player of all time. So, um, um, period. Like, I don't. I'm I'm not gonna get into the argument of greatest or anything like that. But right. Kobe is my favorite basketball player of all time. 
Like Kobe right. was my Michael Jordan. You know what I'm saying? Wow. Um, and the main reason why I connected with Kobe is like Kobe day in, day out, like you was gonna have to kill him for him not to play. You know what I'm saying? Like right. he got right. a commitment to a, a dog-like commitment to excellence, right? And so when I start to create projects, like I'm competing against myself. You know what I'm, I'm not, I'm not, honestly, I'm not thinking about what nobody else is doing. Like, I already know that I've set a standard with my ability that the next one has to be better than the one before it. Right. Like, cause, cause I set the bar high. You know what I'm saying? Like, so now it gives me motivation and incentive to be like, okay, we got to do something better than that. Like, and better than that. And so on and so forth. So, um, yeah, I just wanted to go ahead and make the project and, and make it the best Black Friday so far. Oh. <laughs> and that um So the, that means the next album got the, the rest of the 20 tracks that you, you wrote? Well I saw I saw um I saw something today of, <laughs> <laughs> I'm not done yet. Something I'm like not, that. Yeah, yeah, like, right. No, I'm not done in 2020. Like oh wow. Christmas oh, album. Oh, wow. wow. <laughs> Hey, you got that. We got that exclusive right Whoa. here. You know what I mean? Oh, that part. <laughs> wow. But, but that's that real. Mamba work ethic, man. You're I was going to say that um that that Kobe skit was perfect then. Yeah. 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 Kobe skit. Yeah. 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 Nah, I'm not. Um, that's exactly where it came from. You know what I'm saying? But I was like, I'm not done. Like, um, cause it because... Uh, Man, I ain't gonna say too much, but we ain't done. We ain't, <laughs> I ain't done. Ain't done. Right. Um, hey, yo, well, speaking you, of speaking of Mamba mentality, man, and work ethic, you lost mad weight, bro. Yeah, yeah, yeah. fifty three pounds, man. Wow, yeah. motivation, yeah. baby. I'm next. Straight up, bro? next. You got next. Yeah. <laughs> wow. Is okay. it because of the pandemic or what? What? Talk about it. Now you know. Um. Okay. So the funny story is. Um. I uh, was one day I was getting the kids ready to go to take them to school. I sat down on the landing at the crib. I was putting my shoes on. Right. And my stomach was in the way. <laughs> <laughs> Don't you hate when that happens? <laughs> my stomach was in the way, bro. And I was like, oh, no, we got to do something about this. Like, because I'm, I'm just like I'm in the crib. But I had to do it my own way, though. Like I had to do like. 10 minute workouts every day, then move up to 15 minutes and 20 minutes and so on mm-hmm. and so forth. Like now it's like weird if I don't exercise mm-hmm. like at all. Like it's, it's very a habit. Yeah. It's, it's such a habit now. Like, so to me, I probably could go unless I actually pick a rest day, which is very rare. Like even right. my rest days, I do like a recovery workout or something like that, like mm-hmm. the stretch. But um, yeah, I mean, I lost 53 pounds in like six months. Wow. Since, since, wow. Yeah, yeah, awesome. Since like, since like April. I think that's what it is. Yeah. So well, that, April. That's yeah, when you crazy. decided, yo, I ain't messing with the dairy and all of that too. No, nah, what's crazy is like, I still eat dairy, right? I still eat sweets. I still eat cookies and all that. Right. <laughs> but the, but I know, <laughs> I know the work that I'm putting in though. You know what I'm saying? Right. So I can actually kind of like for the first, I think two, three weeks, all I drank was water. I didn't eat no breads, no sweets, no mm-hmm. nothing. Like I tried to train myself mm-hmm. to not discipline, right? Yeah. And then once I did it and was like, oh, I see the work I'm putting in. I know what I'm gonna do. Like then it was like, okay, you know, cookies ain't bad. You know what I'm saying? And I don't, I don't go ham, but there'd be some times, man, that you know, that uh club sandwich and Chick-fil-A with some cheese on it. <laughs> <laughs> I don't set it off. <laughs> <laughs> but now, like, because I'm in a much better shape, I feel it immediately. Mm. You know what I mean? Like, I think that's the real difference. Like, when you start getting in in shape, it's like you feel when you're bringing new things into your body that ain't that instinct kicks in, right? Like, it's it's immediate. It's like, yeah, like, yeah. like that. It weighs you down. Like, something like, burr, 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 burr. like, you didn't even finish the sandwich yet. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> What are you doing? <laughs> Man, body's like, bro, hold up. What's going on? Now, I saw the vid- I saw your, your videos that you've been, been dropping. Been that, right? And I see yeah. Well, he dropped a couple. Um, yeah, I right. seen the cuts and all. I'm like, oh, okay, this dude's Yeah, in. man, we getting it in, bro. This dude's not playing. So, yeah, I was going to so, ask, is is the, the been that video, uh, the, the been that, is, is that your, like, is that one of your routines? 
Oh no, nah, I just did that in the video. Just did that, just did that the video. <laughs> <laughs> That's all that was. But um, no, nah, I mean, I had just finished a program called Six Weeks of the Work, so I was flexing hard, man. Um, that was that was a uh, a cool little program. What's it called? Six Weeks of what? Six Weeks of the Work. Okay. Um, mm-hmm. It's on the Beach Body. Like, I got to get video ready, huh? Hey, now you know it's crazy. I didn't even think about <laughs> it like that. What's wild though is like. I'm still surprised how skinny I am, right? Yeah. Like, cause you don't necessarily see it yourself first, right? Like everybody else does. So like when it hit me was when I shot the video for, I don't know, cause that was the first one we did that day. And mm. I saw like the, he let me see the playback. And I was like, there's like a wedding pick in there, right? Or something like that. Right? Dude in here. Like, like, in there, like I had that with the joint with the uh raincoat on with the hoodie on. And so, like, when I saw it, I said, Yo, who is this skinny dude in this picture? Like, <laughs> I didn't know, you know what I'm saying? Like, I wasn't I, prior to that, I really wasn't taking a lot of pictures. You know what mm-hmm. I'm saying? I just was kind of I was like, I feel better. I know, I know I look better, but I don't really know how far I've come. And right. that's why on the Ben that video, he shows a picture of me yeah. when my daughter was born. Oh, that was the picture. Hands over to me now. And I was like, oh. Yeah, you could tell the difference there. That's where I saw it. I was like, well, who's that dude in the pic? <laughs> Bro, like, I remember that, man. I ain't never going back to that, dog. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so you shot so, all of them in? Oh, my bad, Jay. Go ahead. No, go ahead. Ask him about the whatever. About no, the I was gonna say, did you shoot all the videos in one day, or it was all in yeah, the crib? Three, three hours. Wow. Yeah. We got more videos coming. <laughs> Look, <laughs> yeah, it's good. Not done in twenty twenty, man. I'm not done. <laughs> oh, yeah, that's that's what's up. Done. So, so um, t- to the weight loss, like, what was it that that got you to start? You know. Like go in, like drink more water, or like not eating more cookies. Yeah, like, I mean, how was it gradually getting, uh, I guess more the exercise or whatever? Yeah, decision or was it something that you you started researching? Like, yo, I need to change this habit right now. Well, see, what I thought is what I thought I could do is like play, and so I did like insanity for like a month. <laughs> And I thought I could play. Like, I thought, like, if I did the workout, I could just eat whatever I wanted again. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Like, yeah, yeah. Like, I worked out for 30 days and I lost one pound. <laughs> <laughs> and I was tight. Uh, <laughs> I was tight. That sound like, like me. All that work. <laughs> I was like, all this work, all this sweat I'm doing, I know I'm stronger, my cardio good, but I lost one pound. And so what I did, and I don't recommend this for anybody, I said, I'm going to do the insanity program in 30 days. I'm gonna do two a days. Wow. I'm gonna get up in the morning and do it. That's and I'm insanity. Do it second time in the daytime. Oh, that's right? beyond insanity. Yeah, I wow. said I'm gonna do it. And I was like, I told my wife, I was like, I'm gonna do it and I'm gonna watch my diet. And for 30 days, I lost, lost two pounds. Nah, nah. This time <laughs> I lost 31 pounds. Wow. 31 wow. pounds in 30 Jeez. days. So wow. like, I got down to like Cause I was telling my wife the week uh, at that insanity was about to be over. I was like, I was like sub two hundred. I had like pieces of paper that had sub two hundred in permanent marker, like everywhere I could see it. I was like, if I wanted to get a snack or a cookie or something, sub two hundred. Like I was like, I'm gonna get under two hundred pounds. That was what my goal was. Focus wow. on my goal. I, did, I remember, bro, that morning to the last workout, the last fit test. I was boo-hoo crying on the floor. <laughs> I was like, oh my God, hey then. <laughs> <laughs> never could have made it. <laughs> I'm listening to worship music like you ain't never heard, bro. Like I got under one, I got the 199.8. I was like, yes. Yeah. And then once I said that, I said, I could do whatever I want to do. Yeah. Mm. I said I could do whatever. What about yourself? At the end of the day, you're like yeah, and it it sucks when you're in it though. You know what I'm saying like it sucks, but if you just keep coming back, like I don't, I don't, you have to keep coming back, like because your body will respond. Mm. Like now, granted, the life lesson do, right there. Yeah, like the 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 thing is, what did dude at Vitamin Shop tell uh, tell me and my wife a month ago? He said 
long-term consistency trumps short-term intensity. Mm-hmm. Like where a lot Large. of people fail and stop is because they come in thinking they're going to get abs after doing 50 crunches. Right. <laughs> Switch. They don't they like, I'm done. Like, I don't see, I'm sore. I should have abs right now. I'm sore. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And, and your body doesn't function like that. You know what I'm saying? Like it takes your body time to adjust. So for me, it was doing it when I didn't feel like doing it. Like it was going to the gym when I didn't feel like, you know, it was working out when I didn't want to like, and getting midway through the warm up, And then your body's like, okay, we here now, Jay, we ready. You know what I'm saying? Like, but you have to start, you know what I'm saying? Like, and where most people fail is they don't even be starting. Mm, yeah. Wow. So what's the, what's the regimen now? Oh man, now I do I do one workout a day. I try to eat clean pretty much. Um mm. I'm doing insanity again, just once a day though. Okay. Um, <laughs> I'm fucking in workouts. Boy, I'm out here. <laughs> <laughs> you, know, you get you get insanity like at first I was burning like 300 calories in like 40 minutes. I was like, that's pretty good. Now it's like 600 calories and 30 because you're you're able to push more. Right. So, like, you're able to really see how far you've come, you know what I'm saying? Right. Like, see how quickly it is for your heart rate to level out, for your breathing to regulate. So, like, that's where, that's where it's been fun for me, though. Now, d- you used to train in boxing? Yeah, I've, tra- I've definitely boxed before, and I've definitely done that. Um, and so, like, I be telling people, you can't play boxing, bro. <laughs> <laughs> I, I think some people i think some people might have missed the, missed that i think message. nate robinson missed that message uh this mm-hmm. past weekend <laughs> <laughs> i knew he was gonna get knocked out i knew it wow like, really knocked really? out i knew he was gonna get knocked out before he ever fought like mm-hmm. this is his first fight right yeah, yeah but this is not this is the reason i say that it's like there's dudes that can fight on the street you get in a boxing ring and you knock them out but it's it's not about the ability to throw a punch, it's about knowing how to properly throw a punch, knowing how to right. properly block a shot, knowing how to knowing how to uh you know knowing how to shield yourself, knowing how to to and to, pace yourself. Uh, yeah, it, it absolutely knowing how to. Three clean. minutes is a long. Well, they, did they do two minutes or three minute two. rounds? Two. Yeah, I mean, if it was two, even still, it's like, still a long time. It's a very long time in the ring, moving consistent, moving yeah. constantly, and like. That's why we be acting like we don't know this because like in street fights, Cash was not swinging for eight minutes. Mm-hmm. Dog. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Right. Mm-hmm. It was like mm-hmm. they threw they flurry in. Somebody mm-hmm. even got mm-hmm. knocked out or y'all was rolling on the ground, tussling right. somebody in the headlock. Like it didn't last that long. You know what I'm right. saying? Like, right. Yeah. yeah. Acting like two minutes is not forever. Like yeah. it's, it's a very long time. Time moves mm-hmm. much slower mm-hmm. when like, and I remember one time waiting for that bell to ring that I was in the ring. I was in the ring one time. I thought I could scrap, right? It was a dude who was an amateur. I had on headgear. We had 12 ounce gloves. And um I wasn't, you know what I'm saying? I was like, I know a little something, you know, I had had some training, you know, with grandfather and all that. And and what happened was hmm. he hit me with a hook to the body. Like mm. and bro, I felt at that moment like I had to do to like <laughs> <laughs> right at that moment I was like oh no like this is this is a bad bad decision like it's a bad yeah. decision and like <laughs> it's, it's the, the art form is called pugilism right the scientific right. definition of pugilism is you know it's the constant reconstruction the healing and breaking of the mo- bones in your body like right. so your hands crack they get micro fractures and to, to, to strengthen themselves, they heal harder. You know what I'm saying? Right. So not only are these people learning how to properly punch, but their hands are harder than yours. Like right. so they're, they're not, then they have wraps around their hands. Right. Like the gloves are for their protection, not yours. Like their glo- right. the gloves are for their protection. Most people think that the gloves are like, oh, it's not going to hurt. No, nah. the gloves are to protect their hands right. from your head. Like, that's all. Mm-hmm. Like, it's not this idea that people don't know. Like, yo, if you get hit by somebody who can really crack with a pair of boxing gloves, I don't care how big they are, you're going down. Like, right. it doesn't matter. Like, right. you're going down. 
I, I remember for the Run My Fade video, Floyd Mayweather Sr. told me I had boxing gloves on. He was like, throw a punch, throw a punch. He got in the shoulder roll. He got tucked in. <laughs> and like I was like, cool. So I was like, he kind of old, you know what I'm saying? But I know he could scrap though. Like, and so like I turned, I turned the punch over and I hit him right on his arm because he wanted me to hit him on his arm. And what he did was something that I don't think people understand when people do the shoulder roll. What he did is he threw his shoulder into my punch. Mm. So what does that do, right? If you turn your knuckles over and you land your punch right square on somebody, if they throw it back at you, that's an opposing like wall. Yeah. So yeah. it's right there and it's messing up your wrist. You know what I'm saying? So right. when I hit him and I put, you know, really turned the punch over, he was like, boom. And I was like, oh, that hurt. You know what I'm saying? That hurt right. me. Like, right. like, Come on, throw it again. Shoot it again. Shoot it again. And like, Shoot it again. And he, he just like, ha, ha. And next mm. thing you know, I could tell what he was trying to do. He was trying to time me. He was trying to do his catch so he could shoot it right underneath. He was trying to be like, oop, oop, so he could throw something over top, right? So, like, what happened is when he threw the counter, like, he didn't hit me, but the counter that he threw, I didn't see it. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Like, he was like, oh, those are the ones that knock you out. <clears throat> That's what I'm saying. Like, yeah. and so it's like, bro, that dude is 60 plus at least. He threw a punch that I didn't even see. And I was right in front of him. Like, so, so when people like Nate Robinson think you could hit some mitts or spar a little bit, hey, bro, ain't nobody hitting you back. Like, <laughs> yeah, like how long did he train for this? Cause like, I know mitts don't hit back. <laughs> he, he three, four months. Like, yeah. it, but that's not enough. It's the same reason why when people were rooting for Conor McGregor to beat Floyd, I say, oh, he's going to get killed. Right. He's going to get killed. Like, cause all that exercise bike and all that stuff. Even though Floyd build, dragged it out, <laughs> but you don't you don't build stamina over the course of like weeks when yeah. you're going against somebody who has built stamina over the course of years. Years, right? right. And even Connor had problems in UFC with his stamina. Absolutely, and That's it's been like a big problem you, for him. You can sprint all you want. You can prepare all you want. Like it's different when you're in a fight, though. Yeah, right. like cause it it costs you spend more energy throwing and missing right you know what I'm saying? like you you spend a lot more energy so i saw that coming a mile away nate robinson doing the little pad work <laughs> like, nobody's hitting you back like nobody like that looks yeah. cool for reaction timing and all that because it's choreographed right you know, yeah, like, right all it's gonna take is one person to disrupt that timing and you're gonna learn a lot about yourself and jake paul what was interesting was what he said after he said i'm doing this for real like I'm, I'm not. He really is. Like he's really he's trying. Like he has a passion for. Times. It. He's done yeah. it multiple times. Like so, right. it's not like he's new to this. You know what I'm saying? Right. Like so, Nate Rob, you know, tried to get a check, and, and and I knew as soon as Jake Paul said, like Nate Robinson's kids just don't watch the fight. Like wow. I said, he, uh, so said he that? that. Yeah, he said it. Like before wow. the fight, he said, "Yo, Nate Robinson's kids don't watch this fight. Like don't." Uh-huh. Watch this. And when I saw Nate Robinson. He got hit behind the head at first. He did. Yeah. yeah. First yeah, knockdown, yeah. he got hit behind his head. But he but, turned his head though. Yeah, he did. Like, yeah, he tr- but he came in crashing in like a goofy. Right. You know what I'm saying? Right, like, right, right. So, so, but and he got hit in the back of the head. I said to myself, I said, stay down. Like, don't get back up. <laughs> <laughs> no, That's exactly. Throw the fight. <laughs> You're about to get murdered. He gets picked. He got picked up. He was like, "Ah, I hit the back of my head. Ah, I squinting." And that was a that was a ten count. I said, "Let him slide." You're about to get knocked out. Like, like he didn't realize it yet. Like, Mm -hmm. I was like, "He's about to get knocked out" because he's now he's in his head. Like he didn't shake it off. Like it was never no. I got knocked down. He was like looking at the ref. Like, did you see? He hit me on the mm-hmm. back of my head. He's squinting. He trying to get up close. And I'm yeah. like, you're gonna get knocked out. Cause yeah. all it's gonna take, if Jake Paul understood anything about boxing, they take a step forward. You take a step back. That's how you mm-hmm. measure distance. Mm-hmm. So when Nate Robinson tried to resort to some you know hood tactics and try to just come in like this, all Jake did step back. Uppercut, left hook, right hook. That was it. It's like, where are you going? Like, there, you first of all, you didn't even see it because you're like right. this. Right. <laughs> like, so he he stepped back, threw the little jab, 
threw uh, he threw an uppy, and I was like, once that uppy landed, I said it's over. Oh. Like, cause that right hand is coming, right. and and yeah. like you don't see it, like cause your yeah, head is. Right. That's the only reason he threw the uppy. He was like, that was that I, was one of the worst knockouts I've seen this year. <laughs> Aside from uh, Canelo hitting, um, what's his name, yeah, Kovalev. Yeah, oh Kovalev. Well, you know. Yeah. Okay. Like, <laughs> but, but but like, I knew it. Like, I watched it. Like, cause I'm watching it on the joint. Like, I'm watching it and writing at the same time. I'm watching this and I'm like, yo, he finna get knocked out. Yeah. Like, I saw it in the Tank Davis fight. I said, yo. Oh boy, that was ugly. he's about to get knocked out. That was an ugly one too. Yeah, he don't realize it, but he's about to get knocked out. Mm-hmm. Like, and it's because I saw Tank was timing the counter uppercut the whole fight, and he was catching him with it multiple times. But you know, when a fighter's fresh, they're yeah. still like aware. Yeah, yeah. So when you start getting tired, like, and and you see mentally, like the punches that you're throwing are not detracting them from still coming forward <laughs> right <laughs> they're gonna start sitting down on those punches that they were trying to like passively throw so yeah. like your boy was throwing the punches and i was like uh-oh here it come <laughs> like yeah. here it come. he got closer and closer and you could tell tank was willing to eat the jab he was like i eat this because i know that i'm gonna get so close to you you're gonna throw this jab one time too many i'm gonna duck and throw the uppy and then it's over with yeah. And immediately he got close enough in range and your boy was trying to throw the t- <laughs> boom. Oh, that- goodness. Did he go through the ropes? Like, what he, what he, under the ropes. He went under, under the ropes. The, <sighs> it's like once it, once somebody's coming forward like that, you don't scare them no more. Like we're they're boxers, and you know that's a mental thing, right? Like boxers that come forward continually, it's not because you're not hurting them all the time. Is so that they could play in your mind. It's pressure. Yeah. You're not going to move me backwards. Right. And like that starts to play in your mind. Like it's like, yo, I, I put a lot into that punch. Why are they still here? Like, so so you start to check out mentally and tank came, knocked him out. Nate Robinson. Oh, I think I'm gonna run in like this. <laughs> right hand. I was concerned. I, he was down, he was down for a long time. I was yeah. like, oh, that don't look good. Yeah, but luckily but, he got back up. It, Look at it though. Like, <laughs> how could he? Like, he didn't see the punch. Yeah. yeah. Like he probably yeah, he, he had got knocked it. out. He had got knocked down twice before, too. Right, right. Yeah. It's like at the end of the fight, I wonder if he asked his corner, like, what shot did he hit me with? Yeah, like, what happened? <laughs> right. You know what I'm saying? Like, because to, to me, like that's I don't know if y'all remember the Joshua fight when he fought Ruiz the first time. Oh my yeah. goodness. He got knocked down. He went back to his corner and was like, what did he hit Yeah, Yeah. Mm -hmm. Because he didn't know. Like, and if you don't see it, those are the shots that cancel you. Like, those are the shots that take years off of your life. Jeez. Yeah, nah, he was cool. What what do you think about Jake Paul as a fighter? And ultimately, he wants to fight uh, Conor McGregor. What what, what do you think about that? I mean, he's 23. Conor, obviously, you know. I don't know. Like... I don't personally think Connor is a boxer. I think right. Connor has some boxing skill. Um, mm. But you're also talking about Jake Paul, who's actively boxing now. Right. Yeah. Um, and he's going to get into the ring if Connor McGregor even wants to do that. Jake Paul's not a little guy. No. He's not, he's not little. Like he's he's yeah. a big guy. He's a big dude, yeah. Yeah. So so if Connor McGregor were to try to get into a boxing match with Jake Paul. I would hope that it would be five rounds or less. I would hope because if it's championship round length, like 10 to 12 rounds, I think Connor will gas out. Like, yep. and I don't think Connor's power translates in the boxing ring the way that he thought he would. Mm. Like, like that's the thing that I think shot Connor McGregor about Floyd. Like his, mm. he was like, yo, I'm throwing these punches. I'm the bigger guy. And Floyd is like, you know, I've been taking punches my whole career. Like right. you, you're knocking out MMA dudes that don't take punches from professional boxers. <laughs> yeah. Right. Like, so when he went forward, Connor, who's never really trained as a boxer, didn't know how to step backwards in fight. He didn't know. Yeah. Like there's things that you have to learn through time. He didn't know. Like that's why he kept doing that stupid old switch foot thing. 
<laughs> like in trying to like act like he was doing because he didn't know. Like when Floyd got too close, all kind of knew how to do was clinch. He didn't know how to fight right. up close. So I was like, he's gonna get killed. I said to everybody watching, I said, by the eighth round, they're gonna have to really start to think about throwing the towel in. Like, mm-hmm. cause he sat on the bench like this. They put ice <laughs> on his back in the second round. I said, he's done. <laughs> like yeah. he's done. So Jake Paul, if he fights Conor McGregor right now, he got his good. Nah, shot. I mean, he didn't. He didn't say right now. He, uh, he said obviously it'll be years. He got as good a shot as any. I mean, he's got more professional fights than Conor does at the boxing level. He's mm-hmm. got more professional boxing matches than Conor. Yeah, yeah, true. Conor is gonna want the Which, big bag too, though. Yeah, speaking of bags, you see how they only got paid four hundred and forty dollars. Who? Jake Nate Paul Robinson. and Nate Robinson. Well, Jake Paul's probably got he Jake Paul ain't tripping about money. Like yeah, the Paul no. well, for sure, for sure. All but the clout he got from knocking out Nate is bro, will make, make him way more. Yeah, I mean he was already making great bank off of YouTube right. anyway. You know what I'm right, saying? Like, right. They, they were make they were selling out Logan and Jake were selling out the, the Logan Paul and KSI fight, they were selling right. out arena. I saw that. Right, yeah. right. You know, like they they good on money. Like they no, don't no, for sure. For sure. But I went, to, I went just, to I went to the stable center for that joint and you did? it was wild. Yeah, he was there. Oh, you yeah, saw the fight? The, yeah, I went, yeah, I went with the the cipher effect and it was wild, man. There was like so many people there and merch tables everywhere. <laughs> you wow. know? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, but they're, yeah. they're they're amateurs when it comes. I mean, not amateurs. I mean, they're professionals, but they're amateurs starting out in the professional sense. So that's why I think in Conor, boxing they're gonna start you out with a little bag first. <laughs> it ain't like oh you gonna come over here. Connor Connor should be fighting people like Jake Paul if he gonna box. Yeah, really. Like yeah, nah, he should not be fighting like professional boxers. No, with 10, 15 fights. No, 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 yeah, no. no. No, no, he'll be 0 and 12. I don't think he'll beat anybody in his first 10. Because you got to remember, those guys that went pro, they have hundreds of amateur fights. Mm-hmm. Like, mm-hmm. They're not just, you know, hopping at pro level. You know what I'm saying? Like, these people that have been on that level for a while. What did you guys feel about the um the main event, Tyson versus Roy Jones? Roy said everything hurts. <laughs> <laughs> he said his body still hurt, didn't he? Yeah. Roy said everything hurts. I was so, super disappointed, man. Yo, but Tyson like, said he got mad respect why? with him because he hit him with everything. Why? Because they were clinching. Like, it was, half of the fight was Roy. Were you not entertained? Did you not hear Snoop Dogg? Like, y'all really looking to see, like, 60-year-old men, like, knock the snot yeah. out of All right, yeah. Yeah. I want to see Tyson the knock Roy out. <laughs> see, just well, drinking it happened. Go down. I think Tyson wasn't going to knock Roy out. Like, because that was part of the rules. Like they, yeah. yeah, those were the restrictions. Like, I could tell Tyson's strategy, though. His strategy was to not shoot, shoot to the body. That yeah. was the strategy he had against Roy. He was like, oh, you want to dance? I'm going to keep throwing these hooks to the body. Right. Yeah. And I was like, I'm shocked Roy still dancing. Like, because I know that hurt. <laughs> Yo, the way that Tyson was moving, I was like, what in the world? Like this dude don't get tired, nothing. And you mm. see Roy when he gets to his chair, he's like breathing. And <laughs> they asked, "Yo, him, he had a hard you, time you walking to the ring, though." You yeah. saw, like he yeah. had like a bad knee or something, like two bad knees. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah. he looked like he was limping. You gotta cut that out, though. Like Mike, Mike is not ready for the world class heavyweight boxers, though. No, like no. that sound cool. You know what I'm saying, like, but it's over against against like the elites. Oh yeah, Mike in trouble. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like he did that to Roy, who ain't fought in like five years. Like yeah, yeah. not doing that to somebody who's active every six months. Like it's not happening. I just yeah. want to see more fighting. Like every couple of, of seconds they clinching. I'm like, wow, y'all clinching, man. Yeah, because they wanted to survive, man. They just want to <laughs> <laughs> You don't want to die. <laughs> Seriously. <laughs> Like, they already cut it down to two minutes. Roy had some slick moves, though. I ain't going to front. He punched him one time. The look yeah, of the, the pull out the old Roy. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, he still he still boxes. He, know, he still knows how to box. Yeah. He's too old for the young bucks. Like, he just, that's cool. But, yeah, he, Roy will get knocked out. He fight somebody at work. Like, like. <laughs> <laughs> going to get Nate Robinson. 
Yeah, dude look like he's, he, he he'll not skip cardio he'll not all enough. training camp. <laughs> yeah, you said what? I said he looked like he he skipped cardio all training camp. Facts. <laughs> there was another fight though I missed, man. That Daniel Jacobs had a fight. That oh, was yeah. He right. fought. He fought. Was uh, it? He fought uh, Rosado. He fought Rosado. Garbage. That fight. I wasn't that a split decision. Like nah, they get they it was up. a split decision, but the was ref, it? yeah, yeah, yeah the, the the announcer said said that Rosado won, and he's like, no, no, I'm Danny yeah. Jacobs won. Yeah, but my thing is like, Rosado shouldn't have even been in the ring with Danny. Like Rosado, right. Rosado is a journeyman. Yeah, you know like Daniel Jacobs had three fight three losses in his career. One where he got knocked out. One was Canelo and one was Triple G. Triple G, yeah. He All elite boxes. Decision with Gabriel Rosado, right? You know I mean? Like that shouldn't have even been. Yo, Daniel Jacobs need to retire. Rosado is the guy you fight before you start fighting the big, the the A right. listers. He's, he's, <laughs> he's a he's a tune up fight. That's yeah. Fine. He's well, he's like a B C class. Like yeah, he's he's the gateway guy. Like he used yeah. to be. You he put used to be nice. Mind. He's good, but he's I mean, he might be a nice person, but nah, nah, you don't remember him. <laughs> but you know what his problem was? He used to cut, he used All to cut that easy. Yeah, he cut because he, he had a fight with Triple G in and Triple G's Triple early G. days, and he banged out with Triple G. Like a weirdo. Yeah, like, <laughs> like that was not the move. And then like, just cut. yeah, but like Rosado, like Danny Jacobs was a um he he just wanted that Canelo payday, man. Yeah. Like, yeah after yeah. that, he was like, "Oh, I'm cool. Like yeah, I, I'm mean? like Gabriel Rosado." <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Because the zone, the zone ain't got nobody to give him. You know what I'm saying? Like it's not like he about to fight, you know, uh, Boo Boo Andre or something like that. He'll get beat up. He's not. Yeah, yeah. He's not fighting Jamal Charlo, even though he Charlo was. No, he's not gonna fight him. Yeah. Why? You're gonna lose. And you're probably gonna get knocked out. You want right. to leave with your faculties intact. Daniel Jacobs is at the point, fight a journeyman, beat one of them, retire. Like, don't fight a lion right fight now. Fight a Lemuel, David Lemuel. Oh, yeah, <laughs> Lemuel, don't, don't fight a lion right now. Like, because because at this point, I don't think you could get up for that fight anymore. I, I just don't yeah. think you could. Especially fight after this fight where they nah, were- Nah, it's over. Some people it's were over. saying that Rosado actually won. I didn't I didn't see the fight, but yeah, I they were it. saying like it was real close to call. Nah, I'm cool. I'm cool not seeing any Daniel Jacobs fight ever again. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, dirty, yo. <laughs> well, y'all heard it here, man. Hey, yeah, well, we want to thank- uh, Yeah, we want to thank Jared for coming on the show. The show. Appreciate uh, you. What, what can they find you? What can they find your music? Everything. Let them know. Yeah. At Jared Sanders, J E R E D S A N D E R S. At Jared Sanders, pretty much everywhere. Uh, Black Friday 3 on the GOM Plus app available there. Um, I think it'll go up on Noise Trading SoundCloud in a couple of weeks or whatever. But by then, mm, we're not done. It was over the real knockout. Done. Uh -oh. It's Jared, guys. It's not Jared, all right? I know he lost weight and all that, but it's Jared. Get it right, all right? Yeah, yeah, yeah <laughs> something like that, right? And then straight up, like, it's, it's Operation R&B, dude, now. So I'm going to be doing a lot more singing now since I'm about uh -oh. you know, almost 60 pounds down. You know what I'm hey, <laughs> yo. You went in on that on that joint with her and uh and and uh just a messenger, man. Ah, work, yeah, yeah. Oh, I didn't even know that was you till somebody mentioned that. I was like, yeah, oh was wait, that's Jack. And then I went back to listen to it again. I was like, oh, it is him. Yeah, yeah, man. It's Operation R and B. Like, I'm really trying to prep people for what's coming next year from yeah. me. Like, people are gonna get a lot of content from me next year. Like a nice. lot. Um, probably almost every month something wow um, her? So, yeah yeah for sure um so i know that i know um the gom compilation is coming next year too um and then i got one in the stash a secret stash i'm i'm not announcing we that getting a trap a trap soul type joint that's what we get in next uh -oh. year you'll see, you'll see. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's it's right though hey it's and that's right. another thing man this dude's dropped what seven you said seven projects already no, I've dropped uh, Black Friday three in total since I came into Christian Rap is project number ten. Wow! Um, wow. Show sure. some respect. 
Put some respect on this man's name. Ten. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Put, I'm like oh si- oh seven Lil Wayne. Like like I'm out here. <laughs> <laughs> no ceilings. <laughs> right up. That's that's what's up. That's what's up. Well, uh, thank you, Jared, again for uh, coming through. We want to uh, remind anybody who likes coffee, make sure you check out PeachCoffeeRoasters.com. Use promo code TNC10 to get yourself some good Georgia coffee. And uh, we'll see you next week. Make sure you hit the subscribe button and follow us on Instagram. And uh, yeah, so peace. And our merch. Don't forget the merch. Yeah, it's your merch shop. That's that question. They already know. <laughs> yeah, oh, yeah. yeah, you already know. <laughs> Thanks again. We'll see you next week. Thanks. Bye. Peace. Peace.